Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl Mitzi, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it. Today, we are thinking about forgiveness. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, forgiveness. Luckily, here I have Kathy, I mean, Catherine, who is going to be sharing her perspective with us so that we can really think about this in a different way. So, Catherine, when you think about forgiveness, what does that make you think about? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And second, when people look at the title of this show, they see the word forgiveness, 10 out of 10 people are thinking of their unforgivable dumpster fire person. And they're looking at you saying, Mitzi, I don't want to. And I, you know, that's fair. You don't want to forgive that number 10 unforgivable, they hurt you badly person. But in my world, there's two things that's real. First, you don't have to forgive that person. Stay with me. Second of all, the reason you don't have to forgive that person is because there's probably dozens of people you could forgive before you even get to that dumpster fire. So on a 10 scale with 10 being unforgivable, I think you should start with a number one. The person in school who cheated off your paper. The person on on 95 South who cut you off. You can forgive that person easy mm-hmm. ones and you work baby steps up to the up to the uh up to the harder ones yeah i like that i like that understanding because you kind of like you're working way up to the top you know the tens like the really your hate list like ah i just cannot stand you the presence the mirror just oh everything well you can work yourself up to that point so that when you get to that point it's like oh hmm nothing it means nothing to me okay you're just like a fly on the wall you're there but it doesn't mean anything you know and i think people don't realize that you 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 have to learn how to forgive and i think when you start with something small like even if a a bug crossed your path and you didn't expect you that go. bug to cross your path be like you know what i forgive you for crossing i'm not going to kill you you're welcome you know what I mean? something so simple in that manner people don't even realize that's a stepping stone and i think people don't how do you say? Uh, hmm. I can't catch the word. Well, they but... don't. They don't know how to forgive. Everybody, t- or your pastor, your parents, everybody, your teachers, you need to forgive. Okay, I'll bite. How? Exactly. Nobody how. teaches you how. I'm teaching you how in my new book. But what if you don't want to? I don't want to. I know I have to forgive. But I don't want to. I'm on Facebook. You see the bully. You see that the bully broke their leg. Everybody does this. Don't lie to me. Everybody does this. And you think to yourself, ah, karma. They deserved that. I mean, come on, everybody does it. But wouldn't it be great if you could forgive people and you can get them out of your head? Because that's what forgiveness is. It's selfish. It's personal. In my world, I have a great regard for um, anybody who's in recovery programs and 34 years sober myself. But in my world, you don't have to reach out and talk to these people. It's forgiveness is selfish. It doesn't mean they were right because it doesn't. It doesn't mean that I want a relationship with you just because I forgive you because I probably don't. But and I don't care if other family members had a good relationship with this person with all due respect and all the love in my heart. Good for them. I don't care. I care about you. You're the one who had the bad relationship. You're the one I care about. And forgiveness means you can go on to Facebook or social media, see that bully's name, and you're not going to care. You're not going to think good things. You're not going to think bad things. You're literally not going to care. And that's what it is. It's selfish. You want to stop thinking about the person in your head all the time. And you know they're not thinking about you, which is irritating, isn't it? You want them to be as miserable as you are, but they're not. They're going about their own life. Exactly. And sometimes they don't even realize what they've done is wrong. Exactly. And that that boils their blood even more because it's like, how do you not know your own wrong? And it comes down to subjectivity. You know what I mean? People's perspectives are very subjective and what people consider wrong may not be considered wrong for somebody else. So that is so important. That's the reason why I love when you say it's selfish. It's like you have to do it for yourself because that other person may not know, may not care, may not even still be alive to even know that you're forgiving them, but it's Oh, for you can yourself. forgive dead people. 
at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where they are or are not because you're not doing it for them. You're not reaching out to them. You're doing it for you because you're the prisoner. You're the one who's thinking about these people all the time. Unnecessarily. Yeah. Yeah. For un- for no reason, just living rent free in your mind. So how do you start this process? I know you started with the stepping stone, but how else do you start to forgive? Well, let me give everybody a visual. For everybody who's listening, I'm about to hold a very opaque water cup, I suppose you call these things, um, in front of my face. So okay. in the beginning, you can hold this cup off to the side. Let's say this is anger. Look at my body language. You and I can have a conversation. I can go to the office. I can go to dinner. I can go watch a movie. Easy peasy. I can handle my anger and still conduct my life. But the longer you hold on to this anger, the more it's going to hurt. And then eventually you're going to have to use two hands to hold up your anger. And then if you hold it on for too long, now look at my body language. I'm holding it directly in front of my face. I cannot see Mitzi. I cannot conduct my life. And every conversation I have with people probably has this anger in it. I'm talking about it. I'm breathing it. And my circle of friends is going to get really small because it's all I can talk about. So who wants to be around somebody who's negative, sick, and tired all the time? Nobody. So your circle is going to go. And then you're probably going to overindulge in alcohol or in, in food or something because you're miserable and you're depressed. So by forgiving, you're actually releasing that anger so you feel better. So when you put the anger down, now look at my body language. I can look at things. I can see my new significant other because, well, I'm paying attention now. I'm paying attention to the world around me. I can find that new job. I can, I finally look at what I'm eating and I know it's hurting me. So I'm going to start losing weight. There's a reason to buy the book. You'll lose weight and get money. There you go. But it's because I'm finally paying attention. So you sit down and you get your list together of people, places, and things. I did say places and things. Stay with me. And I want you to rate these things from one to 10 and there are worksheets in the book and I have the audio book available too, but they're, and you rate them from one to 10. Now here's the secret sauce that nobody thinks about. Here's the whole thing. There's a reason why you forgive people and they don't stay forgiven. They have a nasty habit of irritating the heck out of you again. Once you talk to them, it's because you didn't forgive the energy. Mm. Einstein correctly discovered that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It simply transforms and changes to another form. So when you get angry, you think it's leaving your mouth and going up into the universe. It does not. It hangs in your energy field to the point where like the coffee cup, this is all I see. I'm walking around in a little angry cloud. So forgiveness dissipates the cloud. So it makes it translucent. So you can actually see people and see see your life and you can become the person you were always meant to be. So Mm -hmm. you forgive the person, the energy around the person, forgive yourself, the energy around yourself and the energy around the whole thing. Now, as you forgive, this is a marathon people, not a sprint. That's actually hard work, which is why the tens are last, the dumpster fire. And I'm going to talk about that, but you, it's going to, you're going to start to feel better and people are going to notice. They're going to say, did you get a haircut? Did, did you do something different? And of course, you're 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 just you're softer. You're talking about different things, and you don't have to tell people that you have started a forgiveness journey. You can keep this to yourself and just let them think that it's just you and you're magical. That's fine. Right. That's that's totally fine. And when it comes to the number tens, let's take a really bad example like rape. Mm-hmm. Could you forgive a rapist? I wrote the book and I'm not even sure I could, Mm. but there's other things within that memory that you can forgive. Mm. You can forgive the bed, the table, the chair, the park. You can forgive the day, the building. You can forgive your childhood home. You can forgive your childhood desk and your childhood school where the bullies did. Why? Because when you look at that childhood school, your grammar school, you've got a bad memory. Anger what starts to bubble up. So you forgive the school and the energy around the school. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And that way you're forgiving these memories. And I'm only Mm -hmm. asking you to go back to your past one more time, forgive it, forgive all the energy, and then move forward. 
And now I can look at it. I come from a very dysfunctional childhood and I can look back at my childhood and I can tell the stories, but there's no emotional charge there. Yeah. I don't care. I can tell the stories. I can talk about it. And it doesn't do its number on me anymore. I, I, I'm I neutral and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for neutrality. I don't want you to have anything positive or negative. When you look at this this event or this person, it's neutral. Yeah. But I the like tens, that. the tens are hard. So you try and get the 10 down to a nine, down to a seven. I mean, you just, it's baby steps. You have to yeah. be very patient with yourself because as you forgive, you're going to slowly kind of peel away some of the layers of the onion, so to speak. Yeah. It's going to really take a like, couple passes. Yeah. I really like how the fact that you, you provided association and how that's also included in the energy, how that's also included in the trauma and that's how that's also included in the forgiveness process because man, when you were talking about that, I was just like, people don't think about that, but it's true. We really don't realize how much we associate one form of trauma, one trauma and associate so many other aspects and relate that to that trauma or, and yeah. we just, we, and we feed into that and which allows it to grow and, and, and become larger than what it is into our lives that becomes unnecessary. And it lives literally rent free in our lives, disrupting us, interrupting us. And it's, and it's not like we go back to our past one time to even re and to change this. We go back to our past continuously all the just time play this you know what i mean so it's a constant we re re replay just on repeat like on a, a movie loop. playing in the back of your mind that's so it's you over. can't turn it off it's just and, there and then when you think you you are healed and that's what i love too when you said then you think you healed but when you come back and and the energy is still there and it's still that bitter feeling it's like oh man when you said that 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 really rung a bell because that's when the nostalgia comes in you know what i mean that's when you can listen to yeah. songs and and not have associations and when you can when you can smell a certain perfume or certain food or just a a wind or something that goes by that's like flashbacks but there's no tears there's no there's no hatred there's no that, there's that nothing feeling. there's there's no blood boiling there's nothing. nothing it's just like you can be like you know what i lived that moment and it was okay and i had the but that moment just the other day really i was I was, I love my thing is sniffing candles because I like to, when I go to the store, I like to pick the right candle for my, for my house. And I sniffed the candle and I sniffed it. I was like, wow, I haven't smelled this smell in forever. Oh, and I just sat there just thinking about it. And I was just like, you know what? I'm at peace. I'm okay. And I left it like that. And I was like, you can stay right there. You're good. Keep on going. And I kept Perfect. on going with my day. And I felt so proud of myself because I no longer uh associated pain with that part of my childhood anymore that part of my life anymore and it felt so freeing because people don't realize like it is really freeing to just forgive and nobody even knows the reason why i had to forgive nobody knows the reason why and that's it's you don't personal. have to tell anybody exactly you don't have to tell anybody you can keep it no. to yourself yeah live that kumbaya life by yourself and when you meet with people it's like oh Something did change about you, and but that's the beauty of it. Oh my goodness, I love this. You can tell them or not. Already. That's that's up to you. You don't have to tell anybody what you're doing, no, and you don't have to reach out and call them. You don't have to do any of these things. You do it for you. You do it because you want these people out of your head. Exactly, out of your head, out of your mind, and no bother at all. So I know you talked about years a little bit, but when did you realize for you you had to you had to forgive? When was your moment of like, this is my next step? Well, I did forgive 1974. Hmm. I forgave all the people in 1974. Why did I forgive an entire year and the energy around this whole year? Because it was a horrible year. It was the year my, my, my come from two alcoholics and they got a nasty divorce. I was getting bullied in school really quite badly. And I tried to commit suicide. And from those three things, I turned into one of those teenagers, you know, the angry teenager we've all seen draped in black. And I kind of floated through life for a while until my mother fell down the stairs, broke her hip and landed in Lenox Hill Hospital. And even my mother can't get a gin and tonic in Lenox Hill Hospital. She can't. So she dried out. We sent her to rehab. And for the next three years, we became closest sisters. We forgave each other. We had great conversations. We were really tight. Then she got breast cancer and died in six months. And I flew kind of back into another dark place. 
And I came one night, I just had this aha moment that if I didn't change my life, I was going to die. I knew it without a shadow of a doubt that I would be dead within a few years. So I quit drinking and I'm 34 years sober and I changed my life and I started to forgive people. And as I started to forgive, and I didn't know this, this method back then, I was just paying it lip service. I forgive you and just kept doing it a hundred times in the case of certain people, 200 times an hour, you know, and it, there, was days. No energy, there, there just was no energy behind it, but I'd leave some, you know, I'd leave a function and say, I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. And it wasn't doing anything. So it wasn't until probably 2020, to be honest, some friends of mine and I, the three of us came up with this method mm -hmm. and it, it's literally forgiving the energy around the emotions. So when you say the mantra that I have in the book, I have you put your hand in your heart, the words really don't matter. The words are really just for the humans in the room. It's the energy and the, the emotion behind those words. And when you really do forgive somebody and do start with that person in grammar school who stained your sweater, you can forgive this person. Well, you, your shoulders might feel lighter. Seriously, it's weird. You, your shoulders might feel a little different. You might sit up a little straighter. You might just sit there and go, huh, that feels good. So it's going to give you incentive to keep going. Mm -hmm. And one question everybody asks me is, will I ever be done? Uh, humans irritate other humans. Uh, my answer is no. My friend, you will never be done. You will always have something to be irritable about because we are human beings after all, and people are going to irritate you. But mm. every night before you go to bed, I say to do this before bed because your body heals itself when it's sleeping. Pick like 10, 11, 12 people and just every night go through your 10 people and forgive what you can. Now, the mm. reason I'm saying 10 people is I'm a little bit of an overachiever, written a bunch of books. So I, when I discovered this method, I made a list and I'm saying it was a list. It was like 50, 60, 70 name people, places, my childhood home, you know, all these things. I wrote, yeah. I wrote it all down and mm -hmm. I thought I'm going to make it like ripping off a bandaid. I'm going to get through the list all at once and then I'm going to be free. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I did that and I woke up the next morning with what everybody thought was a stomach flu. It was not the stomach flu. I had literally made myself sick. Literally, because the energy has to leave your body. Yeah. I have science to I have science to back this up. Real no, quick. I believe you. I believe there, you. there's a chapter in the book um about some scientific studies. And there's a there's a Japanese researcher who researched water. His name is Masumoto, I believe. You can Google it. He the, the pictures are right there. And I'll dumb this down. He took two containers of water. He To one container, he said really beautiful things to, really lovely, treated it well, loving things. The other container, he, he said horrible things. He berated it. He said that he hated it, all those nasty things. Then he put it all under a microscope. The water that he said nasty things had these brown and black mal uh, formations, really ugly. The pictures are right on Google. And then the, the water that he said beautiful things to had these beautiful snowflake-like crystalline formations. Why am I telling you this? Your body is 98% water. So this is why people say anger is toxic. It's going to make you sick because when you're angry or you're yelling at somebody or something hateful is happening, what are the water molecules in your body doing? They're turning into these black and brown nasty formations and it's literally toxic and it's literally making you sick. And forgiveness is going to transform that energy and all of those molecules into a more loving light filled ones. And your body kind of has kind of sort of maybe has to expel it, if you know. So some people expel it while they're sleeping. A lot of people get tired after they do my program. Uh, some people uh, delicately put might be in the bathroom for a little bit. Um, you're not sick. You didn't eat a piece of bad fish. It is just your body's way of tossing all the negativity. Wow. Thank you for that. Thank you for that explanation. Because people don't realize how we, we do store. And the fact that you made it yeah. so simple as water, associating it to water. And there's so many people who 
find water as a sense of relief and a sense of just like sad and to remind yourself that you are 90 percent water you are think of what the water exactly think think of what what those molecules are doing what is doing inside of you and how Mm -hmm. we store that energy in certain parts of our body and that's the reason why Certain people can develop certain conditions without ever actually being exposed to circumstances that would provoke certain diseases and illnesses. You know what I mean? And people don't realize, people don't realize that. Oh my goodness, this is such a beautiful conversation because it truly makes you think about what are your words say? What is your mind? What are your thoughts? What are they processing? Right. What is What are you believing as your truth? What are you accepting to be playing on rerun? You know what I mean? How often do you allow it to interrupt your life? You know, these are like real questions that people need to acknowledge within themselves before anyone else, because the only way somebody can start working on themselves is when you realize that's that, you, that you're working on it for you. You know what I mean? So they bring that association all together, because if 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 Joe is happy and, and finally being nice and kind and kumbaya, then I can do it too. And he's been through worse sure. or I know their story, you know, and just having these, these, these conversations is so crucial because you never know what somebody's going to do. You never know when this conversation or another conversation is going to be the conversation where it lights that light bulb and be like, no, today's the day that I'm going to make the change of how I speak. Cause sometimes So I've been doing this for the last year and a half now that I've been trying to catch my words. And even when I catch my, catch my words, I have to like, oh man, I need to, I need to try to use a different word for this, or I need to do something different with this because it's, it's about process. And that's why I love when you said it's, it's a continuous thing because mad do people want to get on your nerves, no matter what type of day. Oh, they'll try. They'll try. 24 7 there are sure. there are mean people out there just to see the world burn you know so it's just nice oh, yeah. to, nice to remind yourself like it's it's about you and centering yourself oh man i feel like time i hate when time catches up on us because i feel like we could keep talking for forever on end but to start wrapping up the show what can be some lasting words of wisdom that you can keep us to keep thinking, even though there's really so many great points that you, we had this conversation, but what could be some lasting words? If you don't do anything else, I say you didn't hear anything else. When it comes to the water, when you drink a glass of water and you might want to do this quietly in your mind so people don't think you're an idiot, but say thank you to the water for healing you. Tell your water you love it as it enters your body. Um, I started doing that, and it's amazing how much better I feel. And quite honestly, it really, really does work. Um, To everybody else, it wasn't your fault. You know, Mm -hmm. it wasn't your fault. You're allowed to live in love and joy. And when you do this process, people are going to leave your life. It happens. They, they they probably shouldn't have been in it anyways. You're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. So those toxic ones, let them go. Right. And you got this. Baby steps. Just take mm-hmm. it, very small steps, and start with the easy ones and work up to the dumpster fire. There you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys want to check out her book, check out anything that Catherine has to offer the world, please check out my website. You have all access to everything that she has to offer the world. And you will be able to continue on thinking because that's the point is to continue on thinking, y'all. With that being said, always keep thinking. Bye.